It's good to see each and every one of you in the house of God on this Sunday morning. Isn't the Lord good? And can you say God is good? God is good all the time. Amen. And His mercy endureth forever. And we're glad you're in the house of the Lord. And I just pray God will bless you as I was coming to the house of the Lord this morning. And I was going by other churches as I was on my way here. I said, Lord, just bless them today. God, just pour out your spirit upon them today. Let them see the soul saved. Let them be blessed of God today. And I pray they've been praying the same prayer for us. And if we'll pray one for another, it's untelling what God will do in this house today. We've got several visitors with us today, some for the very first time here since I've been here as pastor. And we're just glad that you're in the house of God today. And I pray God touches you and ministers unto you in a very, very special way today. And that God will just bless you. As I look into the Word of God this morning, I was thinking about that scripture over in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, verse number 27, I'm going to begin reading. It said, Which of you, taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore take not no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father that knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. May I tell you, we can stand on that word this morning. Many years ago, I, we had just had a baby, Gracie had just been born, and, and we were wondering how we are going to make it. Sister Cochran, we wanted her to be able to quit work and to be home with the children, at least until they got to the age of going to school. And, I was thinking about all of the bills that had to be paid and everything that was going to be done. I was in the basement in my prayer room praying, and God said, Stand on the Word of God. And He brought this scripture to me on the Gospel of Matthew, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper, and I folded it up, and I put it under the soles of my work boots that I wear every day to work. And literally, when I went to work, I was standing on the Word of God. And you know what I found? I found that as long as I sought the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost, and His righteousness, God provided for our every need, blessed us beyond compare. I come by to tell somebody that you can stand on the Word of God. His promises are sure. His promises are everlasting. And He's not slack concerning His promises. He's given you a promise. You stand on that Word for God's going to touch you and minister unto you. We're honored today to have Brother Hank and Sister Melissa Connor here with us. Dear friends of ours and powerful, powerful ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've been hearing me talk about them for a long time. And finally, we've worked out a time to have them with us to minister today. And you're going to be blessed by the preaching of the Word of God and through song of Sister Melissa. I just pray that God speaks to you today. And in just a little while, we'll hear them come. But before that, we want to go to the Lord in our prayer. Brother Seth Stacy, our music minister, he's still recovering from his accident. He thought that he would be in the house of God here this morning, and I was expecting him. I was at his house early this morning to pick him up, to help him get ready and get in the car and bring him to the house of the Lord. And I walked in, and I knew he wasn't going to make it to church today. And he said, Pastor, did you not get my text message? And I said, no, and I pulled out my phone, and he had sent me a message early this morning that, he had had a difficult night and wasn't going to be able to make it today. But he said, I'm going to do my best to make it there in the night service tonight. So lift him up in your prayers that God will touch him and he'll be able to be with us here tonight. I mentioned also during Sunday school a couple of times, I've got a, a friend. Uh, a friend that's backslid on God and uh, really going through a trial, a tough time. And uh, been up praying last night, about 3 o'clock this morning, the Lord spoke to him and said, go to the mountain." Go to the mountain and seek me. And I had called him this morning. He was up on top of the mountain, up toward Glenville, North Carolina, seeking the Lord. So I just pray today, I want you to pray with me, that this morning that he'll find the Lord, that he'll repent of his sins, come back to God, and God will take care of all the situation, the, the trials that he's going through. Just remember him in your prayers. You've got a spoken request this morning. 
Heavenly Father, we love you today, God, and Lord, we lift up these needs before you today in prayer, God. Lord, you see, Father God, this daughter, Father, in need of a job. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would make a way for her, God. Lord, where there seemeth to be no way, Father God, I know, God, that you're able to make a way. And Father, Lord, I ask God, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way in our midst today. I'm asking, Father God, that the power and the glory of God would come down. Lord, Father God, those with cancer, God, those that are sick in body, Lord, I believe, Father God, that you can touch them. I believe, Father God, by your stripes, God, cancer has to flee, God. Lord, when the doctors have given up, God, say there's no hope, we have a hope in Jesus Christ today. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that the power of God would be in this house, God. Lord, that you would anoint the musicians, God, anoint the singers today. Anoint Brother Connor as he brings forth the Word of God. Lord, just touch him, God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet today. And God, let your power Father God, fill this sanctuary. And God, we're going to magnify your name forever and ever. And to you be all glory, all honor, and all praise today. Lord, let us lift up your name. Let us lift it up on high. For Father, Lord, you said, if I be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. And Father God, we want to lift up Jesus today and all that we do. In Jesus' name.
things written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah to God, knowing that this ain't your home. We're only passing through, praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to be with you here. Amen to God. I've been looking forward. I was, actually, about a month ago, I thought I was left out. And I'm telling you what. I had, had so many things coming up, and I told my wife on the Sunday, had her coming home for Sunday morning service, I said, Honey, I believe I struck out on Brother Philip today. She said, What? I said, I believe today is the day I was supposed to go over there. I called him up. I said, Brother, please tell me. Yeah, I didn't miss it. Amen to God. He said, You didn't, Brother. I, I was a month early, a month back. I was right. Amen to God. I was wanting to be here with you, praise God. I, I, I've it's not been here good. with you when you when Brother Pastor Philip first come, but I've been in here in spirit with you. Amen. Come on, do you understand what I mean when I say that? I said, I've not been here bodily, but spiritually I've been interceding for you, praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm, come, I'm not just coming to stand here. I'm coming to something backing me up. Hallelujah. Prayer has got to back up back you up wherever you go. Hello, I said, you got to learn how to walk when prayers walk behind you. They walk in front of you. Did you know when you keep on with the prayer, even though what, you might pass on, go on to be with the Lord, do you know your prayers still live on? Learn, learn to live with prayers backing you up, praise God. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I, it's a pleasure to be here this morning, Pastor. Hallelujah. You enjoy that Sunday school lesson? Hey, man, the God. Hey, saints. Get to Sunday school. Hey, Amen. It'll make you wise unto salvation. I said it'll make you wise unto salvation. Praise God. Brother, when I was going to school, you could about forget me, brother. It's turkey hunting. I was going to do it. Amen. Deer hunting and everything else. But when I got me a school of Christ, I'm telling you what, it made me hungry. Praise God. I might have flopped and flipped them, but I ain't a flopping this one. Amen. I want to make a hundred in this class. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We came by the Holy Ghost, saints of God. I said we can by the Holy Ghost. We'll talk out for a while. All to preach to us this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, don't you go to the book of Habakkuk, if you would. Go to the prophet Habakkuk this morning. Hey, man, to God, I'm going to try to get things settled up here. Eh? Hallelujah. The book of Habakkuk. If you don't know where that is, that's page 1372 in the Old Testament. If you still don't know where that is, go to the book of Matthew. Back up and reverse four books and you find it. Amen. Book of Habakkuk this morning. Praise God. I was coming up the road. You know I me mean? Melissa got here an hour early, brother. I was jumping up and Amen to God. Hey, saints, this is a good work. Amen to God. I said this is a good work. Amen. Glory to God. Come to church is a good work. Glory to God. You know them old timers taught me something, brother Philip. I said, my forefathers, they taught me something. Amen to God. I, was, I, I remember hearing that place like, about a month. That wasn't a month ago. Maybe, maybe it was the beginning of this year. My forefathers, I'm talking about the voice brought me up along. Taught me along, you know. Six o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning. Heard a banging on the door. Banging on the door. Six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. Banging on the door. I got up. Went out there. I was already up. Thank God. I not been up and praying. Seeking God. Amen. I got up with the hood in the world. That big six o'clock in the morning. Look, brother, open the door and there he stood. Man of God. He said, God said, it's time for a revival. Won't you start this morning? Said, see you at church. He shut the door and opened up the road he went. <laughs> He'd already been in church at four o'clock that morning seeking God. Doesn't got a hold of God. I'm talking about doesn't go to God a hold of God before lots of folks even thought about giving up. Yeah, he said, seek him early and you'll find him. Praise God. Hallelujah. That might be something, brother. Amen. Thank God. God will work with you, saints. Hallelujah. Have you got the prophet Habakkuk yet? Stand, if you would, for the reading of God's word. I feel good in my spirit around here this morning. I've been weak in my body, brother, all week. Amen. I've been playing. Me and Brother Clay's been preaching revival all week. Now, you know, sometimes you get like that, but I'll tell you something when you mount the pulpit, something happens. Amen. Glory to God. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 3 of Habakkuk, verse 1. When you have that, say, hey, Amen, so I know you're ready. Amen. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shinnah. Oh, Lord, listen to this prayer right here. Oh, Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive thy work. I got a sidebar next to that. says, preserve a life. Hello, did you hear that? Preserve a life.
Read thy, thy work. Notice it ain't my work. It's his work. Thy work in the midst of the years and in the midst of the years make known. Glory to God. And in wrath remember mercy. Boy, is that not powerful. Is that not powerful. I come to do something this morning. I've been sent on a mission. And it's to stir you up. Pastor, he sent me, said, you time, brother. He showed me. It's time to stir the saints of God up. Amen to God. I've come by to stir your spirit man up. Hallelujah. I'm not come to preach to your hide, your skin, your flesh. I come to preach to your will and your spirit. Huh? You see, you can tickle people's flesh and ears. And they're still not being changed when they leave here. But when you strike the heart and the will, brother, it'll do something to the outer things. Hello? God sent me by here to stir you up, praise God. Hey, man, God, would you help me do that? I said, would you help me? Yeah. Hey, man, to God, I want you to pray for me before you say, reach your hands up this way. And I want you to pray for me. God, to help us pour on my Lord, preach the gospel. Father, in the name of Christ, I love you. I thank you and praise you. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory, Father, the honor. Hallelujah. I pray, God, thank you, God, for the good Sunday school lesson. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Everything that you've already done. God, the good saint. All I felt your presence all day here. I pray God I was ready. Hallelujah. God let me say like God Paul was. He was ready to preach the gospel. To them that are at Rome also. Hallelujah. I pray quickness in the spirit. And I pray God stir the remnant of your people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And if there's enough people in here, God enough faith to believe it, say amen. amen. Thank you. You can be saying, boy, I feel the power of God. Glory to God. Let me loosen the collar up a little bit. I feel like working a while. Amen. This is right here. This prophet Habakkuk. I want to give you a little background on here just a little bit. His message is addressed and aimed at not to backslidden people, but to the remnant and the few. Now listen to this right here. He was addressing his message to the people of Judah. Hey, man of God. This is God is about to take action against a sinful nation. And God seeks to use a nation that Habakkuk said, God, there ain't no way you can use somebody like that. Sin had come in, swept in, took over the nation. Well, that nation got corrupt. Well, it's this. God is either going to get our attention with revival or with judgment. Come on, you mark that down. Put that in your shepherd's sack. If God cannot, cannot get our attention with revival, He will with judgment. We don't have to go to the judgment side. I'd rather go to the revival side, wouldn't you? <laughs> so I'd rather go to the revival side. So look at this. God was about, He is telling, He's telling this prophet Habakkuk, I'm going to pull up a nation. Brother, this nation is going to be hasty. Brother, I'm telling you, Habakkuk couldn't understand God. Are you going to use a nation that's more wicked and vile than we are to judge us? And Habakkuk couldn't understand why God was going to use a nation like that. Well, listen to this, saints of God. There's some things we don't understand, but there's one thing you've got to understand. Even though you might not understand some things, I want to show you a few things you can get a whole understand in uncertain times. Hallelujah. Come on here. This prophet demonstrates three character traits. I'm not going to give them all to you. I'm trying my best not to worry you out. He three traits that are specially necessary in difficult times among God's people. How many of those judgments are coming to America? Huh? Yeah, that's right. How many of those, not only America, but it's coming upon the whole world? Judgment is a coming, saints of God. What that is, what I mean by that is a tribulation period. But before the judgment's going to be poured out, there's something going to take place called the rapture of the church. And if you're in his church, part of his church, you still got your lamps trimmed and your oil's burning, praise God, you're going to leave when he comes for you. Glory to God. This is number one thing, character trait this prophet shows is an unshakable faith. Do you have a faith that can be shook or is your faith steadfast? Let me get with you. Do you have steadfast Resolute, staunch, firm, 
decided, determined, unswerving, unwavering, unyielding, inflexible, tireless, unrelenting, never ending, faith. Boy, yes. oh, howdy. I said the mouthful right there. I'm talking about unshakable faith. How I couldn't understand why God was going to do what he did and bring judgment in a way he never thought. But uh, that prophet got to the place. God, whatever you're going to do, I'm going to put my faith in you. I don't understand things, but listen to this. God didn't get on him. Listen, God wanted him to understand this. You've got to put your faith in me. I'll bring you through, praise God. Yes. Brother, help me here tonight. We've got to have faith in God's work. I said, have faith in God's work. Now, I'm going to take you through Scripture here. If you don't like the Word of God, you won't like how I preach. I said, you don't love the Word, you won't like how I preach. Amen. We ought to be skilled in this Word of God. Thanks, God. I want to go through Scripture and give you four Scriptures that will help you out right here. Now, get a hold of these right here. Number one Scriptures, 1 Timothy 1.18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. According to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith yes. and a good conscience, from which some have turned aside, have made shipwreck. Oh, my Lord. I tell you what, it's very important you hold on to faith, thanks to God. I said, I mean, it's a very important thing you keep a clear conscience. You know, conscience is a voice of the inward man. I said, has you, have, have you ever been going on in your conscience all of a sudden smite you? Do, you? do you know what that is? That's the inward voice of the inward man speaking unto you. Hey, man to God. We ought to have a clear conscience before God and man. Yes. Yeah. Paul said this, I got a clear conscience before God and man. That's kind of old. I don't want no seared conscience. Yeah. Uh -uh. I want a pure conscience. Praise God. This is, did you catch something in what that scripture said? Just in case you get this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that you by them might war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. Did you catch something in two scriptures? Did you catch warfare and faith? Next scripture, number two, 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of what? Faith. Faith, yeah. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on the eternal life for unto thou art so called. Listen to this. He said, praise God and keep this commandment without spot. In other words, he said, fight the good fight of faith. faith. Did you catch something in that? You catch something in that? Did you notice something with faith? I'm ministering on faith this morning. Did you catch something with it? Fight the good fight of Okay. Do you catch fight and faith together? Yes. Scripture number three. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I'm ready to be offered, Paul said. And the time of my departure is at hand. Look at this. Brother, he said, Brother, my time, my time's come. Thou the place arrived that time. The important time's on the Lord. Amen. I believe in here. He knew when he was leaving, brother. And he wrote her down. Praise God. Now this is, he knew where he, he knew he was leaving, but he knew where he's going. <laughs> he said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the Oh, see. Are you seeing something in these scriptures? He says, I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. And I have finished the course and I've kept the did you see something about fighting faith together in that? Yes. You see something about fighting faith? Ain't it somehow God ties things together? This is right here. Just in case you don't believe me, this is the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 1. To them that are sanctified by God the Father. Boy, I like that word, Pastor. I don't cringe when you say the word sanctified. I don't blush when you say that word holy or sanctified. <laughs> I mean, it's a good word. It ain't a bad word, brother. It's a good word. Hey, man, to God. How many knows if you're going to see God, you're going to live holy? Yeah. Without holiness, no man's going to see God. It takes holiness, thanks to God. He said, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, preserved in Jesus Christ, not petrified, but preserved. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, man, lots of folks 
folks are petrified. You know what happens when you're petrified? Baby, she's dead. Don't even turn my eyes and ever be. But you preserve something, it keeps its taste. And it gets better when it's preserved. <laughs> Glory to God. He can help. You can only get like that preserved in Christ. Get preserved anything else, you're petrified. But stay in Christ and you'll get sweeter. Amen to God. Hallelujah to the Lord. Boy, I like that. I'm about to cook later up up here. This is right here. Here's four scriptures. Verse 3. I gave all diligence unto you to write unto you the common salvation. But it's more needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend. What that word contend means? Fight, do more fight. For what? The faith that was once delivered to the saints. I'm not ashamed of what was delivered unto me, Pastor. We've been delivered down since God the apostolic work, the testimonies, the teachings of the apostles in Jesus Christ. We are built upon the prophets. We're built upon the apostles. And we're built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm going to keep it. Hallelujah. I said, Trump, Pastor, I'm going to keep that, brother. It got them to heaven. It didn't take mercy to heaven. It took them to glory. It'll take you to glory. I said, we can fight for this. Defend the faith. Praise God. This is a good work, saints of God. Can you hear the, I feel like preaching a little while. Can you hear the prayer of the prophet? Oh, God, revive your work in the midst of years. Yes. And in the midst of years, make no. My Lord, have mercy to God. Did you catch some of them four scriptures I give to you? Fight and faith go together. In other words, if you're going to have faith, you're going to believe God. Did you notice you're going to take a fight to keep it up? Hello, is that my one the crazy one? Yes, sir. You start walking by faith, you'll come up against a fight like you never had. But be a good cheer. Faith is a victory that overcomes the world. I might preach that tonight when I get here. Hey, hey saints of God, I've come to stir your faith up. I've come to let the Holy Ghost put the poker on the side of your toes and stir your toes of faith up. Praise God. <laughs> Listen to this right here. Did you know we got a war fire? You got a war fire around here. You do. War a good one. I said war a good war fire. Listen to this. He said, 2 Timothy 2, 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the fires of this world, that he may please him who's called him to be a soldier. Hey, soldiers, you're in a good warfare around here. It's the fight of faith. Praise God, hallelujah. Listen to this right here. We might walk in the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. Huh? We got, we got a warfare, says God. And our warfare is not your brother. And your warfare is not your sister. Your warfare is against that stinking enemy called the devil. Hello? I said, that's what your warfare is. He might come and get behind people, and behind them people ain't, but the people ain't the problem as much behind them driving them to do what to do. Oh, Lord, help me to God. Our warfare is not the flesh and blood, but it's mighty through God. It's spiritual. It's pulling down strongholds. Hey, preacher, we need some prayer warriors around here. Is any prayer warriors in mercy? I said, does any know anybody out here know how to pray and get a hold of God? Hey, man, the God, brother, I don't know about you, but it's in like more, more time, the closer we get to glory, the coming of the rapture, it's in like, brother, it's a warfare to get to pray and to bust through that cloud of stuff out there. It is. I'm telling you, plow through, press on through, that victory of coming. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Get your harness on. I said, get your harness on. Get your war clothes, war clothes on. What about Elisha? What about this man called Elisha? You ever read anything on him? Oh, he'll do something to you, faith. I said, he'll do something to you, faith. Now, there's something that ties Elisha up with Elijah and puts them together. And that word says, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Elijah, when he was being caught up by the whirlwind going into heaven. And the man, man of the man will come back down and ask whatsoever you will. Second Kings chapter number 2, verse number 9. Nevertheless, you've asked a hard thing, but nevertheless, if you see me when I'm gone, he said, let it be. You can have a double portion of that inheritance, brother. Hey, man, God, there's some people don't want it. Brother, there's a Elisha group that does. Brother, I'm a 
on that last group on St. Harry's, brother. Yeah, who in here, who in here had enough faith to ask for a double portion? Hey, man, you got, you know, brother, I need to grab the house. <laughs> it gets good. Everybody's done. Hey, man, you can get seconds if you want. I'm going to jump up and get seconds. I love it. Hey, man. Listen, when you get Christ, and Christ gets inside of you. Hey, man, you got that something gets inside of you. There's an insatisfiable satisfaction that comes. I'm not satisfied where I am. I've got a longing to go on with God. I've got a longing to press on, to fight on, praise God. This ain't the end. This ain't the time to hang your head. It's the time to pick your faith up, praise God. Hallelujah. When you went up to heaven, when you went up to heaven, he said, no, this is what Elisha said, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Elijah done more warfare for Israel than all the armies of Israel did for their king. I said, a man of God done more for Israel in warfare. Yes. Yes. The God that answers my fire, let him be God. Come on. It takes a... Thanks to God, lots of people are sticking in caves. Yes. You know, Obadiah? I didn't know I was going to preach on him, but here we go. Remember, you remember that man, Obadiah? There's a connotation held on him in Scripture. It says this, And Obadiah greatly feared the Lord. And he hid, is this, he hid a hundred prophets of God. Hid them in a cave. <laughs> but I thought, oh boy, that's, that's good, you know. But who's working with Ahab? And who's working with God? Come on, come on. Come on. I said, who's working with Ahab? Ahab come up to Obadiah and said, Obadiah, let's go through the land and let's find some grass. And see if we find enough water to keep us. Keep the country alive. You see, because a man of faith got up her and got the praying that God would shut the heavens. <laughs> and the heavens were shut three and a half years. Come on. Oh, my Lord. Now, Obadiah is with Ahab. Okay, it come time for Elijah to show himself on Ahab. He went up and found Obadiah. He said, where is your master today? I'm going to show my face unto him. Yes, sir. Your master. Where's your master at? He's looking for grass and he's looking for water. He said, I, today I'm going to show myself unto him. Oh, no. No, no, no. We took an oath that we couldn't find you. If I don't tell Ahab that you're here, he'll cut my head. He'll kill me. He'll kill every one of us. He said, I don't care what he said. God said, i got to show myself unto him today. Here's the deal. Oh, I didn't know I was going to do this. Here's the difference right here. Can you see something with Obadiah? And then Obadiah said something to Elijah. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel was cutting the prophets of God off? How did I? He took a hundred prophets. He gave them in caves about fifty and fed them with water and bread. Was it not told my Lord that? Huh? Listen, listen, listen to this right here. This absolutely blew, blew me smack out of the water. What's, what's the difference between the prophets in the cave and the one firebrand out in the middle of the desert looking to show himself a Nahab? I tell you what it was. He was a man of faith. That's what it was. He believed God. He stood in prayer until he heard from God. And when he heard from God, he wanted to stand to show himself what God said. What if a church would get a hold of that pastor? I said, what if a church would hang in that altar till God Folk would stand up in mercy and would say, let it be known this day, there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. My goodness. Look what he said. You want to this? Obadiah. Obadiah. Obadiah's thinking was like this. I'm going to work alongside him. I'm going work alongside of him. Maybe he can see me talking in tongues. Maybe he can see me coming to church and Maybe he can see me coming to services, whatever, praying with the Bible took it. And maybe it'll rub off on me. And he'll say, I'm a good man because I fear God. Huh. What about that fire breaker up there? Where, who, who's out there seeing the fire? It wasn't the ones in the caves. It wasn't the ones in the caves. It was the chariot of Israel and the horsemen there. He was working with God out there. Okay, now look what happened. You know what it was? There's no difference between a dead prophet and a silent one. This 
is no time to be cycle. Ain't that the spirit of our day? Don't you say nothing. Don't you, you just stick in your cave. We'll feed you some bread and water and you can have church in that cave. Brother, I'm not of that group. I said, I'm not of that mold. God didn't call me to stick up in a cave. He called us out to shine the glory of Jesus Christ. Praise God. He anointed us with the Holy Ghost and fire. I said, he's baptized us with the fire. It ain't time to hide in a cave. It's time to call the fire down. You know what happened? The fire failed. He slew 450 false prophets. Slew them. Fire failed. They said, God in heaven, he is God. <laughs> Look at this right here. He slew all of them. And I'll live from you that day that there's a God in heaven who answers by fire. Is that right? He done more. One man of God. I can see that as one church who sold out to God can do more warfare, obeying God and following the Spirit than a whole nation can. So when he went up, Elisha said, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen are up. There goes the warrior. There goes that man of faith. He going up. He said, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen are up. Now, switch the tables around. Elisha got the double portion. <laughs> I said, he got that double portion, brother. And when he took it, all his life he walked with it. Now get down to the end of Elisha. Elisha is on his sick bed. Huh? Elisha's on his deathbed with sickness inside his body. And Joash the king, if you don't believe me, read 2 Kings chapter number 13. Joash the king of Israel come up to visit the prophet. He come up and look what he says. Old child of Israel and horsemen thy love. I looked at that pastor and I said this. Here is the same power and the same anointing for warfare on a deathbed as is the same anointing back here with Elijah when he's calling fire down from heaven and him walking and being called up the glory. You know what I see? I see this. The same power that's got power to catch you up that you won't see death is the same power that's on your deathbed if you gotta go that way that'll give you power on a deathbed. Oh, here's what I've seen, saints of God. Joash the king said, Oh, child of Israel and the horse from there up. The king said, this is, what the, this is what the prophet said to that king. Get bow and get arrows. <laughs> huh? Get bow and get arrows. Put your hand on the bow. Bow, bow. Weapons. Put your hand on the bow. Pick the bow up, put his hand on it. That king put his hand on the bow. The prophet put his hand on the king's hand. Then he said this. Open the window eastward. He opened the window with the other hand. He said, now get an arrow and shoot. You know, she didn't say or hit or aim. You said just shoot. Hello, saints of God, are you with me? If I, if I lost everybody in here. Here he is. He, king comes hand on the bow. Prophet's got his hand on his hand. He pulls back. He don't know where he's at. He shocks. That man of God on that deathbed full of faith and power said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. You see, the king come up to weep and whine. The prophet said it ain't time for no sedative. It's time for a stimulant. Come on. Hey, this ain't no time to weep and whine. This is warfare time. That's what that spirit of the child of Israel and horsemen are of. That's people who are war. When everybody else is falling flat, saints of God. That's people who still believe God when they ain't no sign of nothing around. Oh. Everybody can believe God when your bank account's full. Anybody can praise God when the bills are paid with blood. And it's burning up, and there's no hope, and there's no nothing coming, no sunshine. It takes a man of faith, a woman of faith, to stand up in that day. <sighs> Glory to God. How about Murphy? God's called you to be a child of Israel and a horseman there. I shall on that praise God. 
He's taught us to be warriors. This ain't no time for us a day to get knocked out and put your head up the sand. We need some warriors around here. We need some people full of faith and power. Praise God. He's called us. I said he's called us. Oh my Lord. I was about to go, I was about to go ten ways right there. Hello, is everybody still all right? You got a budget still open up? Look to chapter three. Look down. Roll down. Go down to verse 17. Habakkuk 3, 17. What about Habakkuk this prophet? Did he get faith? You better Hebrews 3, 17. That it is evident. We're not justified by the law. The just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17. He said the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. For it's evident the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38. He said, listen to this. He said, his soul, which is not satisfied with God, he said, the soul which turns back, God shall have no pleasure in him, but the just shall live by faith. <laughs> Habakkuk finally found the place. He quit questioning and started faith. Wow. <clears throat> Hello. Did you catch that? The prophet, you read, you read Habakkuk 1, 2, and 3. He's full of questions in 1 and 2. Get to chapter 3. Questions are gone. Faith will turn questioning into faith. Yes. Yes. You don't believe me? Verse 17, Habakkuk 3, 17, look at it. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Are going to see fig newtons? <laughs> I like him fig newtons, brother. I don't know about you, boy. I sure like them. They come out with some strawberry ones and raspberry. Yeah, they said, this is good for you. I said, thank God, because I sure like them. Praise God. Put a double dose of them on me, man. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, fig newtons are gone, brother. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. Ain't no apples, no grapes no more. I said, the grapes are gone. The labor of the olive shall fail. Olive garden shut down. No more savage, no more tall savage. <laughs> oh my Lord. The fields, the fields shall yield no more, no more green beans, no more potatoes, taters where I come from. No more taters, no more tomatoes, no more field corn. It's all cut up. My Lord. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. Think about that. No more lamb chops there in the Boy, I like him. Left. No more lamb chops. That's gone. There shall be no herd in the stalls. Ribeye steaks. It's gone. Milk's gone. No more milk. You know what it's looking like? It's looking like it's a place, a desperate place here, hopeless. Huh? Oh, this woman said, all, all this, it can't be cut off and gone and withered. Nothing looks like it's all hope. Look what he says. I found a Yeti cooter. Come on. I found a Yeti cooter in the spirit. Yes, sir. Come on. Hello, saints of God. I can't afford one in faith. In faith, so high, I can't even afford one. Up. I got to go to Walmart and get me one. <laughs> Hello. But I found this prophet had a Yeti cooter. Don't believe me. Check verse 18 now. Check the first two words out and put them together. What's he saying? Yeah, yeah she's Yeti. <laughs> I said, there's your Yeti. Yeah. Hey, prophet, there's no fig newtons no more. All that garden's gone. The steaks are gone. Ain't no potatoes in the fields. It's desolate. Everything's gone. No hope, no life, nothing. What are you going to do? He said, I got a cooler. What we got in there? I'm glad you will know. Everybody got your hands up on the door. Yes, come on. We got in there. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Come on. <laughs> That's enough to make it all call. Yes. I'm going to rejoice in God, brother. Right, brother. It takes some, anybody. I 
I say can rejoice when things are up. But brother, it takes men and women of faith to be able to stand up when all things are fell through the cracks. And they say, I believe God. Hallelujah. I'm going to rejoice in him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to magnify him and not body which belongs unto him. I've got a cooler, praise God. And it's running over. Hallelujah. Yet yeah, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. He shall make my feet like Adam's feet. Now I shall walk upon my high places. Men of faith is the one who travels and walks like that. We want to faith. <laughs> is your face turned up yet? Huh? Yes. Number two, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to quit. I ain't gonna hold you all day. I'm gonna show you number two. You gotta have an unshakable faith. Number two is this right here. Oh. You ready for this one? My goodness, my time's done run up. I got a whole, the Holy Ghost got to hold this right here for me. Uh, see, see in the book of Habakkuk, chapter number three, look up verse three. Look up verse three. God came from Timon, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Selah. You ever wonder what that word Selah means? You find that in the book of Psalms a whole lot. You know what that is? That's a hot lick on a guitar. So you can catch your breath, brother. Get a good, get a good breath. Go oh, again. Yeah. <laughs> Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was as a light. He had horns coming out of his hand. There was a hiding of his power. See, God stretching forth his hand. God's a coming from Teman. Before him went pestilence. Burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth, and behold, and drove asunder of the nations. And the everlasting mountains were scattered and perpetual hills bowed down. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushion in affliction and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. My God. Verse 9. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes even thy word. Verse 10. The mountains saw you. They trembled. The overflowing water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows it went. Verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst stretch the heathen in anger. Verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. My God, even for the salvation with thine anointing. What was all that? What was half that chapter about right there? It's about this. Remembering God's works. I'm going to close with this in right here. Habakkuk prayed this prayer. Have you still got your Bibles open? Go to the book of Psalms. I'm going to read you something right here that shook my bones. The book of Psalms, chapter 78. I'm going to read this passage and I'm going to try to Wind it up for you, all right? Psalms chapter 78. I'm talking about remembering the works of God. You think, I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing special about that. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Did you know remembering is a fit twin with faith? Yes. You want to stir your faith up? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Okay, you forget what God has done back here. When you get up here and you forget that, you'll not have no power to go on them. Huh? You don't believe me? Look at this chapter right here. Psalm 78, verse 5. You have that? Say amen. amen. He established a testimony in Jacob. See, how about that? Jacob got to get a testimony established in him. And appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. Talking about the Sunday school lesson, brother, you was all over this morning, Pastor. Saints of God, that the generation to come, verse 6, might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. The things God has done for you, if you do not declare them to your children, 
I'm a going somewhere. You think I'm scattered. I'm not scared. I've been doing something here this morning by the Holy Ghost. If God's dust, you know what happened? I believe sometimes pastors are not careful. People will forget their own testimony. And sometimes it takes some ministers to bring back to their members what God's done for you. Think about that. Look at this. Don't you forget what God's done for you and where He's brought you from. Because if you forget it that many time, you will forget it. Okay? God put a testimony in Jacob. Jacob, brother, said, I'm going to get my house right. I'm going to tell them what God's done for me. He's put a testimony on the inside of me. He put his voice on the line and said, The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Are you getting to this? That verse 7, look. That they might set their hope in God. If you don't tell them where they're going to set their hope at, I'll tell you where. They'll put their hope in the entertainment. They'll put their hope in superstars of this world. We need somebody to tell them the testimonies of God. Hello! Huh. And not forget the works of God, but keep the commandments. Verse 8. And might not be as her fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that not that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Everybody look at verse 9. Everybody look at verse 9. Look at this scripture. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. You can have the warfare, you can sing the warfare songs. We say we're on the battlefield. Do we even think we're many women of faith in God? Think we're soldiers for God. Look at this right here. And we can even carry bows and carry arrows. And when that enemy comes up, we'll tell him up. Right. That's what the scripture said right there. It said they turn back in the day of battle. Why? Why? This is why. They did not remember the works that their father, the heavenly father, had done for them. So when they get to battle, nobody's told them who to put their faith in. It wasn't passed down. This Pentecostal power has been passed down to me and you, Pastor. Yes, huh? And saints got some of you Pentecostal. I'm Pentecostal. I'm not ashamed of it, saints. I'm not ashamed of being called Pentecostal. Hey, man, Jesus was Pentecostal. He poured it out, praise God. He wasn't ashamed. He wasn't ashamed to die for it. Why should I be ashamed to live here? He said, you can have your bows, you can have your weapons, and you still not have no faith to go to battle. You'll turn back. Why? It's because you forgot the works of God. You ain't heard nothing. Hear this. Poke ears up. Spiritual ears. Hear what the Holy Ghost speaks and tell you. Holy Ghost visited me and showed me something. And I'm not afraid to tell you what God has showed me. This is what He showed me. This is what He said. Holy Ghost showed me a trash can, dumpster. Not doing lots of work on houses, remodeling houses, whatnot, building houses. You bring in the big dumpsters, you know, and you put up all the trash in the big dumpster. That's the dumpster I seen. Holy Ghost showed me a great big old huge dumpster. Big old huge dumpster. I seen that dumpster, man, it was cram packed, probably crammed full. I walked up and I seen this great big old long dumpster. And I heard the Spirit of God say, go dumpster that. Anybody here ever went dumpster that? Come on, man. Come on. Might as well be honest. Brother, we'd go. It's like going to the flea market. Brother, I ain't stole the dump. You brought up poor. I said, hey, son, I ain't ashamed how it was brought up. We just brought up how to kick possums off this kitchen sink. Mama hollering and screaming and I couldn't cook breakfast because a big possum sink on the sink and on the dish. Boys, get out like a possum out so you mama can have breakfast. Eight of us in a single white trailer with one bathroom. What no locks on the doors you whistled while you was in there? Huh? And he said, go, Holy Ghost said, go, dumpster diving. I 
chipped up in that trash pile, trash dump. I got to dig it on the inside of that trash dumpster. You know what I found? I found old work tools. Old work tools. Look like old Makita drills. All the drills, all the tools, they was in perfect working condition. There was not nothing wrong with them old work tools. Everything was in perfect working order. The reason why they got thrown away is because it wasn't something new. It didn't look like what the forefathers brought in. It was a new gospel with a new spirit coming along with it. I see them too. And God said, go dumpster back. You know what so he knew? He says, you jump in there and you pull out them old tools and you bring them back to working place. Come on. Yes, yes. Church, can I remind you? This Pentecostal church, it started in the upper room with the Holy Ghost in fire. Hello? They come out talking in tongues. And I'm not ashamed of that, Pastor. I'm not ashamed to be Pentecostal preached. No, it started in the fire. It was working good. They cast out devils. They had signs, wonders, and miracles. But somewhere along the line, somebody said, it won't work no more. It don't look like to you. So they took the old work tools and threw them in the dark. And God spoke to me, go dumpster dive. I know nobody likes to dumpster dive, but men who's got a heart for God, women's got a heart for God, and get her get it back out. Here's a Mahasio on the home side. Let me ask you a question. Do you remember what God has done for you? Can you remember the work that God has done for you. Don't throw that in the trash can. There's little ears coming up under you and behind you. And somebody's got to hear what God's done for you. Let me tell you something. He brought me up off a deathbed. Doctor said no more hope. No more nothing. I see days in the hospital. Such a God. Tubes everywhere. But brother, let me tell you something. I felt God come down in the third and fourth that Gainesville hospital. I felt him come through the tile ceiling. I felt him come out from heaven. And he touched his little clay and stood me up. Yes. I'm not going to forget what God's done for me. Yeah. People are ashamed to tell people other people what God's done for them. No, don't you be like that. Be a man or woman of faith. Let me tell you what God's done. It looked like there's no meal in the bar, but brother, they put meal in there. It looked like there's no way we can go on. But let me tell you something. If God's going to turn the rocks over and put gold inside of them, he'll make a way for us. What has God done for you? I remember the pastor. I know him. This is my brother. This is my brother. I know him. Me and him prayed together. Wept together. Had our heads stuck in the wall together before these babies come. Huh? I know him. I've been, I've been around with him. I know that man right there. We pray. There's a time he crashed. Broke his back. Couldn't he? Huh? I said broke. How long was that like? Sweetie. Six Grinchley, sweetie. Broke his back. Couldn't he? What? Look at Stand, Stand up. Look here. Got him in his back on struggles and arms. I said, God, but he's back on strong and us. Then Elijah needs to hear that. Allah, I said, Gracie needs to hear that. This church needs to hear that. Because if it's not going to be told you, then next generation comes up, they won't even put their faith in him. But God came from Teman and the only one from my parent. You know what Habakkuk was saying? He was saying this, God, you rolled back the Red Sea in Moses' day. God, you opened up a path that thy people could go across the midst of an impossible situation. God, stop the sun and the moon in its tracks, thanks to God, so that an army could get the victory. 
tell you something, sons of God, he's still working in 2018. He's still working on September the 30th, 2018. It's going to take you stir your faith up and start rejoicing in God. I said he didn't rejoice in man. He didn't rejoice in the flesh. He started rejoicing in God. You see that? Get your eyes off man. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ who paid the price on Calvary. And things will look clearer and brighter as you go along. Anybody want to pull your cutter out and get you a Holy Ghost drink? Huh? Not this morning, would you? In your way. I want you to lift your hands toward God. And I want you to remember and be thankful unto God and thank Him for the good works He's already given unto you. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we gather together.